feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. That's right, you tell him, little buddy. What's up, family? What's up, world? Man, what is going on out there? Welcome, welcome, y'all, to Late Night. Monday night with me and Kimmy Kim, and our special guest tonight is Jennifer Black. All right, y'all, we're going to have a great, great show. I can't wait to hear this one. Been communicating with Miss Jennifer Black and her team for a couple of weeks now, so we're going to make it happen. But before we bring her out, before the Batman say hello to her, let me bring out my good friend, long, long friend, about over eight years now, Kimmy Kim. What's up, Kimmy Kim? Hi, Jerry Royce. How you doing? I am good. What's going on in your world? Kimmy Kim world. I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> One thing I can say is... Um, it's been a great week, um, very warm weather that we're having, so I am hoping that I can get back out and start back walking and enjoying, you know, the weather. It was really cold the last two weekends, <laughs> but um, overall, I'm grateful. How about you? You're so funny, Kim and Kim. I guess you didn't see the the storm system is coming through. <laughs> Oh, Lord, here we go again. We just got rid of the cold weather last week. I weekend. know. Well, we lucky here. We're going to be blessed here in the Baltimore area in D.C. We got 63 up until Wednesday. Then they're going to drop down to 42 for a little bit. But I heard it's a storm <laughs> system supposed to be coming through, uh, I thought I said the Midwest. Um, it'll be like 8 degrees in some areas. Like, I think it's coming up through, like, Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas. If I'm not mistaken, wow. I thought that's what I, I heard on the Bloomberg report. I thought it was Bloomberg. Maybe I was on it. I don't know. Maybe I was on YouTube and it was a, it was another date. I don't know. I was looking at so much stuff today. Today was my day off, so I was I was surfing. Oh, what did you do on your day off? Well, well, we you know we still working on um, getting uh, the TV network up. So we've been doing a lot of scheduling and you know so many. I'm gonna tell you. Not able to stream music on Facebook is a pain. <laughs> you know, that's a pain. What do you mean? Well, you know, even the artists themselves, they can't stream their own music on their, on their page. You, can, you can't play music. They're, they're muted. You know that. You know, Facebook don't let you play no music. Really? Yeah, it's been like well, that for. Oh, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's been like that for yeah. like two years now. Yeah. Yeah, that, you I have mean. To go to Instagram. Instagram is owned by no. Instagram is owned by Facebook. The same thing there too. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, but at least you can't do hours with them. You can only do like five minutes. But right, yeah, yeah, sh- yeah, yeah. Short sure stuff. But I mean, like you know, if you got a TV show and you had the artist interviewed, you can't even play their music. They're muted. You know. So if you were a label or a distributor distribution, you won't be able to have your music played. You know, so everybody jumping on SoundCloud now. You know, they just sharing their music on SoundCloud. And I mean, that's how a lot of people been getting discovered. I'm, I'm hearing, watching um, Bloomberg report, and um, I, I heard Kevin Lau say a lot of people be sending stuff through SoundCloud. So um, yeah, SoundCloud is a platform I was on. It just um, was beneficial, but I am thinking about going back because yeah. I did meet you know a couple of people there, and I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you can share your file. Yeah, they share stuff, you know, and they hook you up. I, I, I like your platform, LinkedIn. LinkedIn been really, you know, going to another level. I'm not sure if you could play music on that, but um, no. Now they have it where you can't really put a lot of podcasts on there. I used to be able to put yeah. all my podcasts, but now it's hard to even do a podcast. Like if I want to share my podcast from Spreaker, mm-hmm. he won't let me. Oh yeah. yeah. Speaking of um podcast and music i went through your uh you know all the shows you sent me and i wasn't able to stream any without adding the music out because you got music playing in the beginning of the shows yeah we do music yeah. but um it's all the music from the independent artists that i received permission from so i feel safe with them 
Yeah. And most of the music I know them or met them or interviewed them. Yeah, because I was looking to yeah. you know to play uh, some of the shows over the weekend, but it's like I had to sit down and edit every one of them, and, and I just ain't had that kind of time right now, so I wasn't able to stream um, none of your shows on the live stream. Oh, really? Yeah, because they they meet that man. I think they let it play over the live, but then you know the playback. You know that's when you get most of your listeners on the playback. Not everybody can tune in live. You know, you know people jumping around. I'm but, talking um, about like the music you can't do. People, I mean, uh, YouTube have an issue with music. No, I was streaming it on um, Facebook and YouTube. YouTube will. Oh. What YouTube does, they allow you an opportunity. They actually have a software that edit it right out, so you can just say, "Okay, this a file, a claim was filed. Just edit it out, right?" But with Facebook, they don't do that. They just say, "Hey, you keep this going, and we're going to delete your account." <laughs> That's what they say. Oh, really? Yeah. I got Dang, it. Yeah. Like, it got that really bad. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you I know, been live on Facebook in years. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why you can't. Yeah. See, we actually been airing the um, ham radio show, and um, of course, you know, we air Ron Jefferson's show, Fire Gospel Experience. He does a lot of interviews, really good interviews. But when he plays those, you know, those indie artists, we're in trouble. So I got to sit there and edit them all out in order for us to, you know, stream them in our morning show. Because a lot of people like to listen to, you know radio when they at work and it's hard to get you can't really get fm stations unless you know you know who you want to listen to oh, and, wow. and i think people are getting a little tired of the syndicated shows because it's the same people all the time you want to hear same you know, people yep. yeah you want to hear about some you other people hear different world. voices yeah that's right a variety yeah so that's what we bring variety all right. exactly that's why i love jerry royce and the uh, positive power 21 yeah. family we bring this that's right, y'all. So um, if you're out there, you're trying to, you know, promote your book, new projects coming out. We're looking at a lot of authors now, too, um, for our television cable shows. Please hit us up. We are, we are in production right now. We are in production. So email me, send me your media kit and your headshot so we can get you booked on the shows. That's right. All I'm airing out of Atlanta and New York, Chicago and North Carolina. So come on out. Hit me up. All right, you ready to talk to Jennifer Black? I am. I am so amazed by her uh, wonderful uh, company. She deals with bereavement, and yeah. I'm like, wow, very unique. Is, yeah, I gotta amazing. get her on. Um, I think I got a book for. She, well, she'll tell me. I think I got a book on Veronica Pearls with Veronica. You know. Veronica used her platform to to help people deal with loss, you know, whether it's loss to your job, loss to loved one. You know, a lot of us lost so many friends. You can, man, you can't even count them no more. Um, I know. So um, I'm going to have to bring her out there on, um, you know, because Veronica, of course, she's still dealing with the loss of her husband about, I think, about six years ago. But that was truly, you know, that was her man, you know. So uh, we will uh, see if we can get Jennifer on her show. Hey, Jennifer, welcome to Late Night. How you doing tonight? Hi, Jerry. Hi, Kimisha. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on here. I think it's wonderful. Anytime I get to, you know, share my story, I'm, I'm very grateful. So thank you so much, both of you, for allowing me to be on your show. Yeah. Well, thank you oh. for joining us. Um, my time is up. I only get 10 minutes to talk. So I just wanted to say hello. You only get 10 minutes on your show. I get 10 okay, minutes Jerry. on my show because they want to hear the ladies talk. That's right. So y'all do y'all thing. I'm right here if you need me. All right, Kimmy Kim. Have a great show, Jennifer. Oh, okay, good. Well, wow. Well, thank you, Jerry. This is actually your podcast, and I thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to um, share. Uh, before we begin, my sister, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. You're amazing. You're amazing, thank and you. I love what you're doing. You know, bereavement is thank scary. You so much. It's you're welcome. It's a lot of help here. And just to know that now I have resources, like, you know what? I got this wonderful sister named Jennifer Black. She is on point when it comes to bereavement. So I'm going to give you her information. So before we begin with this wonderful show, who is Jennifer Black? Oh, man. <laughs> who is Jennifer Black? That's a good question. Uh, I'm a, I'm a a woman. <laughs> Foremost, I'm a woman of God. Um, I'm a mom. 
Uh, I'm from New Jersey. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you perfectly. I okay. just love the so, fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm a mom. I'm a woman. I, you know, I, I, I love to dance. I, uh, aside from what I do, you know, um, again, woman of God, woman of prayer. Uh, I just love serving his people. I love to have fun. I love to make jokes. And, um, you know, and, I, and, and that's, who I, that's who I am. Uh, and I just try to embrace that because I know I realize life is short, especially, you know, with the, the industry that I'm in. Well, I love to dance, too. What's your favorite form of dancing? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, well, I love me some Zumba. Okay, Kim again. I love Zumba. Okay. Zumba, you know, whatever I'm feeling in my spirit. You know, I just, I love karaoke. You know, whatever's going to move me. I don't need no music. You know, music is great, but I could just do my own thing, you know, by myself. So, okay. yeah. I need to hang with you then. <laughs> Where you live yeah. at now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Jersey. <laughs> Jersey, okay. Because, you know, I yeah. really found out dancing has always been one of my favorite things to do. And I I used to be the type of person every morning I would dance for like 30 minutes before I do anything. And dancing Ooh. is so amazing. It's free. You feel free. It's therapeutic. It's wonderful. And, yeah. Come on. Come on. You understand my right, issue, right, with listening. dancing? <laughs> I'm in the mirror and it's just me in the mirror. It's, it's like nobody else exists, you know? Seriously, it's very therapeutic for me. So I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> Oh, wow. I met someone who is similar with dancing. And so yes. <laughs> I, I love that about you because that means that, you know, when we go through our ups and downs, um, dancing would still be there. And one thing I have found in dancing is it's very therapeutic. And I want to thank mm-hmm. you once again. So tell me, what led you to this journey of bereavement? Oh, man, so, um, you know, experienced death in my own family. So in about 2000, around 2011, uh, my family is very close. My mother has mm-hmm. eight, seven siblings, including herself, so it's eight all together, and then my father is 12. And so uh, in about 2011, on my dad's side, like our family, I, I don't mean to be graphic, but they were dropping like flies. I don't, that's the best way to say it, to get you to understand. Uh, unexpectedly, I mean, one was out of state, um, the others were in state, but uh, we were like, okay, what's happening, what's going on? And so at that time, I think it was probably during the second death, it was my my aunt's husband, uh, that was the one that was out of state. I'm like, God, what is going on? How are people able to like handle their affairs and grieve? Like, how does that work without things falling through the cracks? And he's like, well, because let me let me tell you that during this time, we were trying to figure things out. I was on the phone with medical examiners. I didn't know what I was talking. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, you know, we got taken advantage of by the funeral homes, and just we just didn't get things right, right? Uh, and that was to, to be expected based off of, you know, loss and trying to handle all those things. And so God said to me, you know, you're going to be an advocate for these families. Like, you're going to make sure families don't have to go through this so you can kind of help them during this time. And so... You know, uh, later on, about two years, two to three years later, I started First 24, Bereavement Concierge Services. First 24 uh, exemplifies the fact that we're there within the first 24 hours of your loved one's loss, depending on when you contact us. And so, you know, I I, I love it. I'm very passionate about people who who are grieving bereaved families who, who need a helping hand because a lot of things we don't know. Mm. Even when I, we were mm. going through it, I'm like, okay, I didn't know that. And the funeral home, they're not going to tell all of them. They're not going to tell you that. And they're not all bad. Don't get me wrong. But there are a lot of rotten apples, I'll put it that way, right, who won't tell you any different until you're actually in the actual predicament. And so that's how it started, you know, lost within my own family, um, me seeing you know, the, the loopholes and how funeral homes are profiting and how we're just so, uh, we're not educated about the importance of preparation, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. that's what you see after the fact. And that really saddened me, but I was just grateful that God enlightened my eyes and, and kind of assigned that to me. And so that's, that's how it began. Wow. And what kind of services um, do, you, do you provide for those who are going through bereavement? Yeah, so it's, it, that's a great question. It started out with, you know, holding their hand, being their advocate. Wow. You know, I'm talking about, again, from the time that they contact us. So I'm going to the funeral home with you because I understand you're saying yes. Wow. You say you're no, like, pro- uh, please don't stop, but I need to put this in. You, I have never heard of a business like yours. Please, please continue. <laughs> 
Wow. No, I mean, this me either. Amazing. That's how I knew it was God. Because I'm like, okay, I would have hired me had I known this, right? And that's what happens. Like, and that's why it's so important. I, I will tell business owners, like, don't, don't, it's better to, like, put yourself out there than, like, always wonder. Like, take the risk because people need what you have. It's all about solving problems. And so uh, I saw a problem. God showed me with my own eyes because I went through it with my own family, and I knew there was mm-hmm. an issue with it. And so uh, we're there to go with you the funeral at the funeral home. I mean, I've gone with my clients. They're just in, in a daze. They're pretty much saying yes, and I'm like, wait, no. So what are you, what are you saying, Mr. Funeral Home Person? Like, what are you saying? Um, and so we go with you through that. We're the, we're the main liaison with your uh, consent, of course, just kind of going back, you know, the back and forth and all. That gets a lot. That's like a lot. Like, did you bring their tie? Did you bring their shoes? Like, I'm still trying to I'm still trying to get over the fact that they're gone. <laughs> I don't I don't care about that, right? Mm-hmm. So we're there with you that whole time. We are like the liaison, even with family, right? Because they, you know, how they get too, right? Especially like those right. second, third, and fourth cousins who have never been on the scene until somebody dies. Come on, right? and all of a sudden they it. come, then they okay. come to see if they get an inheritance the or capacity. they're in a will, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. Right. So I'm checking them too, you know, of course, in the most professional way, can you? Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm there to, do, to, to pretty much be your shield, <laughs> to be your okay. shield and make sure that you are able to grieve properly. While I, basically, all I want you to do is show up to the funeral. I'm going to handle everything else. Even after that, you know, I'm helping you, you know, if you want us to or if you want your family to help you go through your, your loved one's law, uh, thing because that's really hard. And, um, you know, it's emotional, traumatic, a lot of things. Uh, we're helping you, you know, if you need to take your deceased off of, off of the the um the phone bill, the bank accounts, we're helping you with that, and oh, kind wow. of just being your support system, right? Because listen, once the funeral's over, nobody's bringing over fried chicken and sandwiches. Okay, nobody's bringing over donuts. You know, everybody's going back to their lives, but you have to live this new normal without your without your loved one. And so we just want to be there for you and make sure you know we know you're not good, but we want you to know that we're there for you, right? Because You know, this is the biggest misconception. When people are grieving, one of the worst things you could say to them is, let me know if you need anything. Just call me because they're not going to call you. They're just not. No, they're not. Send 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 an Uber over there. Send some Uber Eats over there. Panera. Just just send them something, a postcard, something, right, to let them know you're thinking of them because they're not going to reach out. That's just the that's just how it is. And so uh, we're there for you. So that's how it started, Kenny. And then after that, I realized that there is a need for people after the loss, right? People are still Mm. grieving. They're still having trouble. And so uh, I went and I um, received my um, certification. I got ICF certified to be a grief coach, excuse me, to help other people, you know, continue on with this because they still need support. It doesn't, you don't just snap and it goes away. That's not how, that's not how death works (laughs) and loss works, grieving works. Um, so I still want to give them – I'm always praying about products and services for, uh, you know, grieved hearts who need some more some more um, support to help them go through the journey because we're going through it, right? There's no – you know, it's not like, oh, it's over. There's no time frame or anything. We're going through this thing. So, so yeah, so that that's it in a nutshell. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Because you said something that was very, very interesting that, after the funeral, that's when it's really hard. I mean, you're going through the motions of being around family, uh, planning, mm-hmm. and making sure everyone is doing well, especially the person that is uh, uh, who is affected the most by the uh, the, the graduation, depending on um, yeah. how afraid that they're going to heaven. But it's still, you know, a process. You're going through the planning, you're eating, making sure the family's fine when everyone leaves you're by yourself or you feel like you're by yourself because you just lost someone yeah. and just to know there is a service like yours who can just still come in and, you know, hey, I'm here to hold your hand. What can I do to help you? What is the name of your company? It's First 24 Bereavement Concierge Services. And so the First 24, I told you, with the we're there within the first 24 hours. Concierge came from the fact that when I think of concierge, I think of, you know, like when I go to, on vacation and I'm like, what, mm-hmm. what's the best restaurant? Where, where can I go zip line? Where, where can I do this and that? Mm-hmm. Because I, I tell people all the time, I'm not a therapist. I am not a real estate agent. I'm not an attorney, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not a financial mm-hmm. advisor. But, but what, I, what I will do, I'm going to connect you and find somebody that's going to help you with okay. anything that I cannot assist you with, right? 
um, because I'm I'm a woman of integrity, right? I love God. Uh, my family, they're my my clients, they're my family. So I'm going to make sure that I work people with, with people who are integral, who they can trust, right? Because they're putting their trust mm-hmm. in me. And so if I can't give you your answers, and if I can't deliver that service, I'm going to find someone that can. And so that's where uh, concierge came from, because you know it's 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 high end. Like I want the best for you. I'm 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 not going to stop until I find you know the best possible answer for you. Awesome. And yeah. do let's say for instance I'm in Missouri. Can you still help me? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I wow, go girl. Okay, you know, okay. I, I, that <laughs> that revelation came after COVID because it forced us to do that, right? You know, I had clients where okay. I couldn't be by their side, and that really, really crushed me. Uh, and so, you know, some I was a, I was able to go where it was just us and the family, and they were just kind of like a small memorial. But for the most part, I had to do a lot of virtual. And so I'm like, all right, yeah, let's do this because I'm still going to be there your for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I, I mean, I may not physically there be there, but I'm a be there. Okay, even I, even if I have to FaceTime the funeral home director, I don't. It doesn't matter to me, you know. Like I'm gonna get things done, you know, for my clients because I just I I love them, you know, and I know that mm-hmm. uh, this is something that they need, and I love what I do. So so yeah. And how did this come about with the book? Please tell me more about this wonderful book, the title, uh, the reason behind it, and how does it feel in knowing that you are. An author. I mean, that has to be. I mean, it doesn't be, feel like, real amazing. Too. It doesn't <laughs> feel real. And I, I mean, it's been about three years, and I have two books. So the oh, first book, Here's the Hope, that came. Oh, girl. Yeah, the first one came as a result of of death. My four year old. Um, uh, so my best friend, who is basically my sister, uh, and I consider her daughter my niece. She's four years old. Her name is Hope. She passed away in her sleep. Uh, in 2018, mm-hmm. and um, that was devastating. I will never forget that phone call. That whole thing was devastating. So um, God was just reminding me that there are so people, so many people in need of hope. Her name is so significant, and it, and it was so like, okay, this is what God wanted me to do, and I knew, knew more people needed it because, uh, you know, my, my best friend, she wasn't the only one going through this. And so, you know, I wanted to make sure that I kept Hope's legacy alive. Uh, I kept her mm. name re- relevant and just, you know, they know the meaning behind the story. And so here's the hope. Uh, uh, birth was birthed from that, uh, you know, with God and, and, and um, Holy Spirit and just what we went through. And so it's a 30 day devotional to bring healing while grieving. And it's just, you know, I took the things that I went through, what I heard her, her say, what I heard some of my clients say. And I want to do real and raw, can you, honestly, because people are like, you know, um, you know how they say the cliche things like mm-hmm. what, what, what God has for you is for you. You know, God can't put more in you than get there and all the, you know, water and sunshine. And I'm like, in some of my, some of my, um, you know, chapters, I'm like, I can't take this anymore. Is this real? Like, is this a, is this all a bad dream? You know, it, it, the, the, the chapters and the titles are real and raw because I wanted to, I wanted people to be able to connect with that and relate. Like, I'm not going to tell you it's all sunshine and roses because it's not. It's an emotional roller coaster. That's how grief is. It's um, it's an unpredictable mm. emotional roller coasters. You're up, you're down, true. you're to the ground. Yeah. You're back up, you're to the ground, you're to the ground. Like it, there's no specific order. There's no time frame. And I wanted to make sure that people were able to connect with that uh, based off of the different chapters. Mm. And so that's how Here's to Hope came to came, is here. And and the other one is the Passing On Workbook. And that's pretty much, uh, Kimmy, that's basically what I do in a book form. So I'm telling you, if you feel like I could do this on my own, like I don't really need, you know, First 24 to come and do things. I feel like I'm strong enough to be able to grieve and handle the affairs. So it kind of just is a checklist. So it'll tell you what to do, what documents to get that's together, awesome. making sure. Yeah, it's kind of just trying to remind you there's a funeral checklist to make sure you have everything on that day and just different documentation to to help you during the, the process after someone, you know, your family, your loved one passes away. And you are available in any state to do this. Okay. You are my radar. Cool. And so mm-hmm. I just want the fact <laughs> yeah. that you are allowing us to see that um, even when we go through our most challenging time, because death is the biggest enemy and it, it doesn't go away, like you say, it becomes mm-hmm. more easier each day, but you never forget that loved one. I just love the fact that you're so passionate about this wonderful opportunity that God has given you, and it's very unique. Um, Thank you. What has been one of your most proud moments 
when you realized that you were making a difference? I know you mentioned your best friend daughter, and that's I'm so sorry about that. And whoa, you're amazing. But I mean, it's it's, it's something that caused you to start this. I know you said you had family members, but what was that the main trigger, or was there something else? Or because this is a, a really unique business. I have never heard of mm-hmm. this. I heard of funeral homes. I heard of wheel, but concierge. This is dynamic. Right. This is awesome. Yeah, I thank you. This is when I was analytical um, thinking even, right here. <laughs> yeah, it's God. I'm telling you, because even when I was doing my research, I found you know funeral homes and people were even funeral homes. I mean, they were the, under the misconception like you're not a funeral home director. I mean, straight up a, virtually attacking. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not. <laughs> nor do I want to be. But uh, you know, I looked up different when I was doing my research before I even launched it. I I was I found companies that were similar, but they were they were very informal. So it would basically tell you like this: Kimmy would say, "All right, you live in Austin, Texas. All right, here are four different funeral homes where you can go. Here are oh, four different homes where you know, like, are very you. Yeah, yeah, it was it was You're doing the work and I, for the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I want you to feel like you trust me. Like I want that trust and that comfort right away, which which is what I always re- will receive before I even started. That's how I knew, you know, looking back, I'm like, Oh, I was called for this because people would just talk you know, I would just say hello and they would just spill. I mean like I don't know why I'm so comfortable talking to you. Maybe feel like comfort and peace. And so when I look back, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is all ordained by God. And so it was, it definitely was the the the, the multiple deaths that uh, they, that was the trigger. And and I was already doing it, Kimmy. I was already trying to mm. because I was close to my family, very close with my one particular aunt. She's like a second mom to me. And so when her husband died. To me, it was like nothing. You know, it was like me knowing, you know, my name, like the mm-hmm. back of my hand. It, it was nothing for me to do the things that I, w- I was doing. I, it, it didn't negate the fact that I was, I was breathing, right? I love my uncle, right? But it, I was able to still get things done in, in decency and in order and professionally uh, and, and be dependable and reliant. And, peop- and, and I was able to do that. And, and I'm looking back like, oh, I was doing this all along. And when God told me, I, I was surprised, but I wasn't because when, when he had me, you know, recollect, I'm like, I was doing this all along. I've been doing this all my life, really, even with, with other people before the death, just co- consoling people and listening to them and, and act- actively listening to them, you know, with different things they were going through. So it was most certainly, uh, I guess I got the signs beforehand, but the trigger, I guess what really woke me up, the light bulb, was when God told me specifically, the Holy Spirit told me that I'm going to do this. And it, it made sense, not right then and there, but, you know, like a couple weeks later, I'm like, oh. And when I would get more and more clients, I'm like, oh, okay, I see now. So, so yeah, and I didn't fight it. I didn't, you know, I was nervous. I was, I, I did have fear, but I'm like, listen, you call me to do this, you're going to make the way. You, you, you're going to speak through me. You're going to do this, so. Yeah, and that is one thing he will do. He will bring resources your way because when he gives you something to do, it's bigger than us, right? So right. I'm like, yeah. wow, you're touching so many people. And wow, kudos to you. With that being said, wow, Thank who you. are some of the people that you have looked up to over the years? Because dealing with grief um, 24-7, I know it could be challenging as well. So who are some people that you tend to fall back on when you need like that mental break because you too need to take care of yourself as well? Oh, yeah, I am a big advocate of self-care. That's IE dancing, right? We talked about that earlier. That's very big for me. Uh, and, I, again, I can do that all by myself. I don't need to go to the club. I don't need mm-hmm. all my friends. I can do it by myself. Um, that's so you okay with family. family. <laughs> That's what's it. Yeah, That's yeah. It. Uh, you know, and it, it's whatever self care to you. I tell people all the time. Besides exactly. dancing, you know, me eating icy in Target Target's parking lots. People watching. What you know about icy? What you know, know about icy? <laughs> what's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite flavor? Uh, what you talking I about? I like lemon and blue raspberry, but peanut butter. Okay. So you know, I I just be you know I like to mix them up a little, give me variety. But you know, that's self care. Another form of self care to me, and I, I think that's very important because how can I help you? You know, I pour so much. You know, not just mm-hmm. not just in my profession, but with my friends, right? With with people who need help. And so when I'm able to not only pray and and meditate on God's word. I need to self-care and do what's best for me. Because I even tell my husband, a lot of times when I get home from doing funerals, I'm like, 
you got it. You can you just take my daughter? She's eight. I'm like, can you take her and just whatever y'all gonna do, do? Because I need to digress. Like I, I need to process what just happened. I don't cry at the funerals for the most part, so I have to get all of that out when I get home. Now, how do you deal with that? That's another thing. How do you manage your emotions um, around others? I don't. I, be- I just. I guess it's. I. I. It, it's God. I. I think I'm trained at this point because I mean. It take you know some of the ones I mean I was like the tear were, the tear almost came on my cheek right I mean I would let it but that's fine but I just try to stay you know I try to stay within the realms right yeah it's for for my client uh, you know if it comes down it comes down you know I'm not like trying to hide it hide it but for the most part I try to stay more poised and comforting and you know. Uh, it's just something that I do because I just feel like it, it, it helps me. It helps my clients. Right. I just stay, you know, but again, if it comes, I mean, there have been times where the tears did come down. I just couldn't help it. Uh, but there, I'm not like shoulder shrugging until I get home. <laughs> so, okay. uh, okay. yeah, so I, I, I do do the self care. I digress. Uh, I spend time with my family and I try not to infuse it. Sometimes it does get it because the thing is, Kimmy, I'm learning now not to take it on so heavily because it does affect my family. It, it affects my marriage, uh, you know, because um, my husband is aware of the gift that I have. I mean, I could wake up sobbing, crying over people I don't even know who have passed away, you know, feeling their family's pain. And uh, I just have to pray mm-hmm. and, and know learn how to uh, compartmentalize it. Uh, not in a um, not in any type of insensitive way, but just so I can live my life. Because if I don't, exactly. then I'll be, you know, crying all day, exactly. every day in a corner somewhere. <laughs> you know, so exactly. yeah, my family definitely helps me, and being able to to administer self care is very important. I do that. That is non negotiable. Okay, uh, spending time with my friends non negotiable. Any type of self care that's non negotiable, and you know, my husband is aware of it, my family is aware of it, and it it works. So yeah. Wow. Jennifer, you are an amazing servant for the Lord. You Thank are allowing you, people Thank to, you. you're welcome. You're allowing people to feel at ease, to feel, because it's very emotional planning, your loved mm-hmm. one's funeral. This is the last time you see them. You want everything perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of advice would you give to someone right now who is facing bereavement because you are a coach? What are some of the steps that is helpful for someone to go through? Like, I know they need to, you know, come and consult you, but give them a couple pointers, not all of it. You know, like, absolutely, I would love to. Yeah. Um, that's a great question, and uh, let, I'm going to first preface that by saying, so with coaching and therapy, and don't even feel that with what I'm, the tips I'm going to give you, if you're not ready for that, that's totally fine. So uh, therapy deals with the past. So that's like, oh, man, I can't get over this. And, and it, I mean, this, this death could have been a year ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20, 30. It, there's no time frame on grief. Remember that. And so you're like, I can't, I'm just stuck here, right? So therapy deals with that. Coaching is saying, okay, I am ready to move forward. I don't know how. I need somebody to hold my hand to show me how to get there. I'm going to tell them where I want to go, but I need help, those steps to get there. That's what coaching does, and that's what I do. So in, in regards to anyone that's dealing with grief, right, and you feel stuck, a couple things. Uh, you can, first of all, give yourself grace, right? Again, there's no time frame. There's no guidelines. There's no instructions. Mm, thank right? you for telling me that. Yeah, you need to allow Before yourself, you do the steps, yeah. I have met people who tell a pastor, oh, you're a pastor. Get over it. But that person is human. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, I mean... It, my uh, my cousin, her husband passed away in, oh, was it 15? Um, both of them are only in their mid-30s, micro, my, my motorcycle accident. And mm. one of the family members told her, uh, I think it's time you start dating and move on. What? This is my husband for wow. years. He has three children, and you're telling me, uh, the insensitive things people say, that's a whole, can you, that's a whole different thing. But I would say to, again, give yourself grace. Allow yourself to feel what you feel while you heal is what I often say, right? Whatever that is. You know, I've gotten to a point because for the most part, uh, Kimmy Kim, I, I'm a very, um, I'm a very, I consider myself a strong person, right? I don't wear my feelings on my sleeve. I'm very, like, stoic, assertive, things like that. But grief lately has been has had a way of bringing me to my knees, right? I have no choice. And so I've, I've been mm. my 
my grief. If I gotta cry, guess what I'm gonna do? Do that. I'm, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry, baby. With, Come if on. you don't if you don't deal with grief, <laughs> it has a way of dealing with you in the most inconvenient way. You could be at the doctor's office, at the mm-hmm. supermarket, but because you keep bubbling it in, the littlest, slightest thing, you could see an ice cream cone and and just lose it because you and your grandmother used to go get ice cream. So allow yourself mm-hmm. to feel what you feel while you heal. Uh, another thing I would say is to, as I spoke about earlier, get a therapist or, uh, you know, if you want to do a support group or uh, the therapist can be virtual or in, in person, but see what works for you. You have to kiss a few frogs. I did. I definitely did. I'm like, mm, no, this is not working. On to the next, right? But don't just count it out because one person's not good. That's just how it is. It's just like a relationship. You know, you just have to see what's good right. for you. And then when you find the right therapist, you're like, ah, oh, good. And you will start to uh, be able to heal better and, and, and feel like you can trust them to vent and get those things out that you've been holding in. Another thing I would say is to start a foundation, some type of foundation, charity, in memory of your loved one. So if they died from domestic abuse, Start awareness on them. Mm. If it was from lupus or, you know, congestive heart failure, start a foundation, a therapy, something on health uh, and, and, and being more healthy. Th- things like that really bring joy to people who are dealing with grief because it lets them feel like they're, they're leaving a legacy and keeping the memory alive of their loved ones. So that's a great one, too. Uh, discover a new hobby. You know, I, I, maybe you hated X throwing and now you love it. It's a way, it's a form of self-care and just getting out your emotions and your whatever's going on inside, right? So so try a new hobby, cooking, things like that. You know, don't knock it until you try it. There, Because when you lose a loved one, there is something in you that does die, right? There's something different. You know, you, there's something different about you. and things you used to love, you may not love anymore and vice versa, and that is oh. Okay. Uh, and just understanding, again, that there, there, there's no rules when it comes to grief. You know, you have to allow – we're learning this. I'm still learning it. And also that we grieve other things. I think Jerry may, may have talked about it. We do grieve other things, not just the physical loss, right, of that person no longer being on this earth, but job loss, relationship loss, a business, mm-hmm. a, a, a business mm-hmm. venture gone wrong, partnerships you know, just done, right? Loss of a pet, loss of identity, right? With all this pandemic Mm. stuff, loss of what used to be. So many people people weren't able to be with their loved ones for the holidays because flights were canceled because they just didn't want to, they didn't want to compromise uh, their, their grandparents getting sick or their parents getting sick and things like that. So there's a lot of loss that we deal with that doesn't involve a physical loss of that person no longer being here. And because we, we kind of diminish and, and play it down and we don't deal with it. It deals with us in different areas of our lives. And so we need to be okay with grieving that thing. It's okay. Like, ma'am, I gained 15 pounds. I'm, I'm grieving what I used to be, the way I used to be, right? Or I'm grieving the fact that me and my best friend, we're not best friends anymore. I'm grieving the fact that I, I, I'm, I'm a divorcee. Whatever that is, that's okay. It's okay. You should be grieving those things and allowing yourself to do that in a healthy manner because if you don't, Again, if you do not deal with grief, it has a way of dealing with you. So those are just a few tips in regards to, you know, helping you move forward and cope with, with grief in a, in a healthy way. As long as you're not hurting yourself or someone else, then just go, go through those stages, do, you, what, those emotions, all those different things. Go through them. Allow yourself to, to, to experience and feel those, those things. Awesome. And you, missed, you mentioned something very, very um, um, uh, cool. You said that there is no time limit on grief. I love that because mm-hmm. I know people who, you know, have moved on and they don't have any bitter, but there are times when you can still reflect and say, wow, this is the month that I met so-and-so on 20 years ago and they're gone. But that's a good, mm-hmm. I think that's healthy because you're mm-hmm. realizing that they're gone, but it doesn't cause you to, you know, um, step away from the reality that they're gone or it doesn't take away, but you're just you know, having a memory. You know how that song may mm-hmm. come on. You're like, wow, that was the song that song mm-hmm. I used to, and I used to, you know, dance to, or me and my grandmother used to love this movie, you know, or, or auntie. But I really believe that is important what you just said, because some people tend to break down the breathing and they don't grieve properly. And then sometimes it become more of a, uh, mental illness because it can trigger down if you don't take care of it. Like you said, you have to definitely tackle whatever you are grieving. Grieving 
I just love, and now you just mentioned that grieving is not always death. Yes. We grieve in so many mm-hmm. different ways. Girl, are you talking about me about 15 pounds? I just gained 15 pounds. Girl, I'm about to <laughs> Listen, it's real. And that's good that, I mean, to your point, yeah, I mean, a song you could have heard, like uh, a scent, right? Uh, I remember anytime I hear a mama song by Boys and Men, I'm talking about break down, oh. shoulder shrug, and I think about I think about my nana. And one time I was in uh, I was in the store and I there was a an old, it was a long line. There was an older lady. She was trying to get in the line. I lit her in front of me. She reminded me of my nana so much. I could not. I was like. I, I, it was bubbling over. As soon as I got in the car, I just lost it. Because she, she reminded me of her, her mannerisms and, and all of that, but I allowed myself just to get it out. And that's okay. And, and it may come, you know, thank God I was able to deal with my grief beforehand, and I was able to, and not saying, I mean, if you want to let it out in the store, that's fine. But I was able to compose myself until I got into the car. I didn't want to startle her either. Like, what did I do, you know? But you have to, you know, allow yourself to do those things, and it could be something as, Little as a little old lady trying to get in the front of you, like I said, ice cream, a mm-hmm. song, a scent, a, a sound, right? There's so many different mm-hmm. things that will make you, you know, and you're you, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm doing good today. I feel good today. And then, you know, by 6 p.m., you're like, wait, wait, what's happening? And that's okay. That's all right. That is all right. Awesome. Now, Jennifer, mm, mm, mm. I just can go on and on with you. I just love your wonderful um, information thank because you. this is definitely therapeutic. And uh, thank you so much. What does a, a healthy uh, bereavement look like? And when it's healthy, do you ever get over it? Mm, no. We we get through it, right? We're going through it. There's not – okay. Okay. You don't, you don't, it's not like you just get over it, right? You go through it. As long as you're on this earth, you're going to go through it. Uh, I know I've read some books where they're like, you know, they, not that they have a time frame, but they're like, you know, you'll get to a point where you're just over it. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I don't, I'm uh, with you, you with that. If you That's why I was child, asking because I don't believe on. so. If you lose a child, you think I'm going to get over that? Uh-uh. No, Absolutely no, not. That's, no. that's not how it works. Uh, so I don't really agree with that uh, because I'm going to be grieving this thing until I leave this, this earth, and that's just what, what it is. And so, um, you know, I, and that's okay. That's okay. You just, with time, you just learn how to cope with it better, right? Mm. So, you know, it's real raw when it happens, but as time goes, you, you learn to cope with it. Now, there are some exceptions, of course, the anniversary of the death, right, that brings a whole bunch of triggers and, and, and emotions and things like that. Their birthday, your anniversary, things like yeah, that, that yeah. you know, that, that weighs down. But, you know, I mean, they, I, I use the example of my uncle all the time, my father's brother. Their, I mean, their mother died, I'm talking about almost 30 years ago. He Every Mother's Day, every birthday, he, every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, he drives over an hour to her burial site to bring flowers because that helps him. Now, others would say, I mean, she's not there. Why does it matter, right? But that's what helps him. That's what helps him. That's, well, right, what helps him yeah, so, that's awesome. Right, and that shows awesome. you that that's not something he just gets over. I mean, this man is like 70 years old, and his mother died thir- almost 30 years ago, and so that's still wrong for him. So no, it doesn't. It doesn't just but, go away. But it's healthy. Know? It's healthy for it's healthy yes, for him, right? It's helping him. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So I love the fact when you just said that everyone doesn't have the same remedy. Everyone has a different way of coping, and I just love that example about your uncle with thirty years of wow. That's that's amazing. Because I'm gonna be mm-hmm. honest. Um, uh, my first love, he passed away back in 1990, and I still be like, oh, May is coming. This is the month that I met him. So it doesn't yeah. take away from the fact that I am grieving. It just, you know, you just remember the good times. And so with right. that being said, I love the fact that you say you don't ever get over it because you don't. Right, right. Right, exactly. I mean, that uh, it just it doesn't work that way. You know, I mean, this person was in your life, whether it was for, you know, a year or, or, or 30 years, right? They made an impact in your life. So it's for, for you, for anyone to think that after a year or two, 15 years, it's just going to go away. That, that's, that's not how it goes because we, we you know, we, we act off of our hearts, off of emotions and things like that. So you don't just forget someone like that. Even if, you know, I know people that remarried whose spouse had passed away and they remarried 
And they still think about that person when, and to your point, when an anniversary comes up, a death anniversary or their anniversary or a birthday or something, it's, it, it, you, you're not supposed to be like, oh, because I'm married, I can't think about, that's not how, that's not how their heart works. It's, it's just not. Like, you Thank know, you. you don't just forget about them. You don't, that's not how it, that's not how we're wired. And so, you know, it, it is very much normal to think about them when, especially when those things come up or every now and then, you know, if you come across a scent or you come across a shirt or a color or something or somewhere you used to go that is very that that's how it is and you sh- I don't it's not you shouldn't harbor that or feel bad about that it it is healthy because it's like oh you know I'm, okay yeah like I remember that you know so I like you know you. that's why I say give, give yourself grace <laughs> I like you too I like you <laughs> Jennifer mm-hmm. we want to stay in touch because Jerry oh, yes. thank you for bringing her on because this is amazing so um I thank you so much for your, your information and you're yeah. making legacy you're making a legacy. And with that being said, what would you like your legacy to be if when God calls you home and your wings, what would you, yeah. what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? I, I want to be, I want, I want God to, to just be proud and just my legacy to be that I help families during one of the most mm-hmm. devastating times in their lives, right? I gave it everything I, I had uh, with integrity, with compassion, with love, right, uh, with comfort, with peace, and that I I help them. One of the I think you asked this too. Uh, one of one of the most pivotal times in my life was when there was a, a a young lady who purchased my book and then she wrote me on Facebook and she's like, you know, this but here's the hope. She's like, here's this was so good. Like, thank you. Like my son committed suicide and I read this book mm. and like this helped me and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I just lost it. Of course she didn't hear or see me do that. But you know, I'm like this it's all worth it because you know sometimes as entrepreneurs and you know when we have businesses it's like what okay, God, what are you doing here? I mean is, is this reaching anybody? You wanted me to do this. I don't feel you know, I don't see the effects. I don't. I don't feel it. And then you get that those those DMs. You get certain things, certain reminders that remind you, like even if it was just for her, Kimmy Kim, I'm good. You know, I'm good. And one so, person. You know, what did you say? That I want touching one person, and you. I'm sure you yes, touched one. Yeah. One wow. So sure my legacy is one that one. I want to be you're there. Me right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for one of the they're the most devastating because God says in the Bible to take care of the orphans, take care of the widows, you know? And so I just want to make, I just want to be there to help these families during this time. Cause you know, a lot of them, some of them, uh, uh, there are widows and widowers who, who have no idea what to do. I'm talking about no idea what to do because their spouse did everything and they feel lost mm. and just, you know, al- alone, even with family to your point, right? You could feel like you're in a room full of family and still feel alone because they don't get it. And so, you know, that that's what I want my legacy to be, for God to just be pleased and know that I did everything I could to help these families during one of the devastating, most devastating times in life and being their advocate. Yeah. Wow. You're amazing. And just knowing Thank that you. you're waking up with oh, a, a legacy to help others, this is very unique. I'm, I, I saw that. I was like, wow. I've seen so many different coaches, but I've never seen a bereavement coach, life coach, and you're and you have so much joy and so much peace um, in your mm-hmm. in your voice and your heart. I could just you. feel you. Wow, I just think you're so amazing. And wow, that's all I can say. Thank I mean, you. I was really, <laughs> I was like, okay, bereavement. This is different because yeah. and, and business yeah. is so unique. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, and I try to, and the the thing is, people do get confused because it can be confused because it's like, wait, what do you do? They're more intrigued, like, wait, now, what is it now? So you're not a female birth, you're like, you know, and that's, a, it's, I, I want to spread the education because the other thing, Kimmy, is that we help families prepare for death. And so that's, as I went through the things I went through, I'm like, oh, man, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. And I see, you know, you see a lot of, unfortunately, you see a lot of, things on Facebook where families can't afford, they're asking money for the funeral. They don't, they can't afford it. It, it does sad in my heart. And uh, one of the things I do pray to God is that we could be a resource where we can help families with their expenses and get to that level. Uh, but one of the things I want to help with is preparing for death, right? 
So we help you prepare for death, making sure you have your last will and testament, your last wishes. Do you want to be buried, cremated? Do you want to be in Miami? Do you want to be in Michigan? That It brings chaos and confusion when you don't tell your family what's going on. And it, it, it's not good. I'm telling you, people, when death happens, it has a way of bringing out people's true colors, okay, red, black, white, and everything in between. And so we want to make sure that you are prepared so that when the person does transition, it's smooth sailing. Like you don't have to worry. You don't have to have that financial burden about, you know, do we have enough money to pay them? Do we have to do a GoFundMe? You know, you don't have that burden. You have that release of, you know, because your finances are in order then that, that person left a good amount of uh, finances for you so you, you can handle things when they're no longer here and still live you know, the lifestyle that you were living because you took care, you all took care of things beforehand. And so we help you with that as well because I, I started to, I saw that and I experienced that as well. So, yes, it's like a full full thing, you know, being there before death, right, during and then after. That's kind of how I explain it with what we do. But we, you know, a lot of it is, is promoted with the, with the aftercare, but the before care as well because that's very important. That's very, very mm-hmm. important because you want to, it's just it's just hard to deal with all the things that come with with death, and so take, relieving that pressure, yeah, is 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 a good thing to do for your family. Well, my sister, um, we are out of time, but I'm definitely going to definitely keep in touch with you. How yeah, can people yeah, reach out fun. to you? I mean, if they want uh, your Jennifer, services yeah. and yeah, your amazing go, services, yeah. your website, everything. Thank you. They can go on, uh, so you can go on Jennifer D, as in Denise Black. Uh, That is my Instagram. That's most of my handles. Um, The website is www.first24loss. Now, it's the number one, the letters S-T, the number two, four, loss, L-O-S-S, but it's probably better to go on, like, any of the social media handles. Look up Jennifer D, as as in Denise Black. You'll find out everything, everything in regards to contacting me and, you know, if you just need to sit down to find out where you're at, kind of review what you what you have going on, and whatever it is you need, we'll, we'll definitely uh, be there for you. Wow, my sister, thank you so much for coming on. And Jerry, this yeah. is so unique. Jennifer, you're amazing. But before you leave, I would like for you thank to pray you. us out. But I want to ask sure. Jerry. Jerry, do you have any more um, um, things you'd like to add before we close the show? Because I wow, this is so unique. I'm like still like wow. I've never heard of your business. I know, you much have needed. Many. Yeah, and you know, doing you know these times now. You know, I I, I knew a minister. I think he told me in 2020 he he, he went to like 48 funerals. So um, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, because he was in you know his church was in the inner city. You know, a lot of people still wow. didn't get the news. You know, a lot of them not connected to the internet. That's why a lot of us know some more than we need to know. Uh, especially now they're talking about a new strain of the variant is out now, and they don't believe that the vaccine is going to be effective because it's already uh, sweeping through Denmark and South Africa. So. Uh, got to wow. be probably back in a mask mandate. I think some of the states just let up uh, for a week. So be careful out there, y'all. Uh, this one right here, yeah. the BA2, BA.2, uh, the Omicron is going to be a little different animal. So um, got to tighten up, y'all. And a lot of us I been on a... Hmm? masking here, so... Yeah, because you know, Kimmy. I don't know you. Cause, cause you've been sick. You know what it's like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of my friends, yeah. he's a he's a former police officer, you know, stay in the weight room. Uh, I think now he does some kind of top top security. He said he was on his back for 14 days because he was trying to man it up. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to man it up. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, he was trying to do it himself. Yeah. Elderberry and all that stuff. Sometimes you, you need modern medicine, y'all. For those of you that still got the conspiracy theories, just think you get that headache. I'm quite sure you popping those aspirins, and you don't have a clue where they come from. <laughs> right. One night, well, well. Anyway, um, <laughs> Jennifer, keep doing what you're doing. We we got to get you on Thank Pearls you. with Veronica. Um, that audience yeah. know a lot about what you're talking about. That's why they tune in. They going through some of the things you just talked about, and. Um, it's another form of counseling because some people are not going to reach out or can even afford the kind of counseling they need to get through it because it's going to be a very, it's going to be long term, you know. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, it's tough. I mean, and I know I went through it with my wife with her cousin, and man, that thing went on for years. Because then you're dealing with relatives, because now people trying to, mm. yeah, yes, br- br- half sisters and half brothers coming out of the woodwork, and they want stuff. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and then a lawyer. Who are you? I'm here. Probate, you know? Honey. Yeah. It's tough, man. It is. It's. It's a heartache. So everybody, uh, and you, and I pro, I've been running an Affleck commercial coming out of Atlanta about uh, getting your, you know, your business order. You know, even if you're young, you know, a lot of us hope that we live 70, 80, 90, but we don't know. You know, just like you talk about the right. motorcycle accident, get your business, you know, triple A, um, ARP, they offer some pretty good prices for insurance. Now, I, now I had some bad experience. I'm I mean, from America. Yeah. Prime America owns. I mean, they they yeah. are very cheap. Yeah, they cheap America. too. You get a yeah. million dollar policy. Whew. Yeah. Now, I I know I had some bad experiences when I went through. I think my union to get insurance, and then you find out you get a letter that uh, something happened to either your direct deposit, which is not your bank fault, but on that case, and then you find out you owe three four months behind payments, back payments, and a lot of times people can't. Give them a check for three, four hundred dollars. Then you, then that policy lapses, and then sometimes they only tell you that uh, they switch carriers, and you know, mm-hmm. so you gotta you gotta stay on top of this. So, so you, you do need to go with some of your larger companies if you can help it. So Prime America, are, and I'm not endorsing them, but I know Triple A and them. They've been around for a very long okay, time, yeah. over a hundred years. So uh, mm-hmm. you know. Get your stuff, and if you buy, uh, there is not a good one. And I think, I think if you buy while you under fifty is a lot cheaper than you wait till you in your fifties, sixties, seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they don't. There's so much misconception. I, I am a licensed insurance agent. I don't sell it. I just wanted to get it because I wanted to be, you know, be able to tell my clients about it. Because sometimes you die like on a Tuesday at five o'clock. People don't know. You know, they don't know their policy. And so, yeah, to Mm -hmm. your point, you got to review it every year. Things change. You have babies. You get divorced. Like you're older. Yeah. So you got to you got to look at you can't just get it at 20 and be like I'm set yeah, because you bought a cheap one. Yeah, 50, what if it's over? It's yeah, over. that's right. And it's a chance when you're in your yeah. 20, you probably bought one that just covered your credit cards in your car. <laughs> when you get older, you're exactly. getting homes, and the price of homes now, you know, if you live in a decent home, it's going to cost you 300 plus. So you definitely got to get yourself right. a, a pretty decent policy to continue, you know, so your family can continue <laughs> to live the lifestyle that exactly. they, they were used to living while you were alive. So I, I get it. Yep. I get it. All right, yeah, ladies. Well, that's the end of our program. So we appreciate you, Jennifer. And again, we will have you back. Um, you. Make sure I book you for our Veronica show, and we'd love to have you on the Thank TV you. show as well. To talk about you know, you know, people don't think about this stuff. They just you know no. doing whatever doing whatever they doing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we get you on some more. <laughs> All right. Yeah, get you on some other media platforms. All right, Kimmy. Kim, you gonna you already signed off. You did your thing? No, no. I'm re- I'm waiting on my prayer from uh, my sister. Oh, okay. Black, and then yeah. I'm going to sign off. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. I pray us out. So, God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this wonderful time that you've allowed us to come together. We thank you for everything you've done for us today, uh, life, health, and strength, allowing us to see another day, God, um, giving us purpose, God, creating us, God, for uh, your will and, and what you have to, for us to do on this earth, God. We are so grateful that you're using us as mm-hmm. your vessels, God. We thank you, God, for even this platform, God, to to, to bring out uh, um, education, God, and, and encouragement and inspiration, God, um, through this show. I thank you uh, for Kimmy Kim. I thank you uh, for Jerry, God, and what you're doing through them and through the platforms, God, and how it's touching people and how the syndication is just going all over, God. We ask, God, that you enlarge their territory, God, more and more, that they just continue to do the work that you have called them to do, God. We're so grateful, God. Everyone that's listening, God, we ask, God, right now that you touch their hearts. Anyone that's dealing with grief right now in any way, oh, God, we ask that you mend their hearts, God. Give them your peace, your confidence for your strength, oh God, to, to live day to day, God, and just to know, God, that all things are possible to you, God, that there is nothing too hard for you, nothing you can't fix, and, and no heart that's broken that you can't mend, God. So we're just so grateful, God. We love you, God. We ask God right now that you give us a good night's sleep, God, that we are refreshed for tomorrow, God, and that we have just a, a great week uh, going forward, God, and we give you all these praises in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Any final words, Kimmy Kim? I just want to say, wow, my sister, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful information. And family out there, um, no matter what you're going through, it's never too hard for God. And right. I really believe in crying. Cry yourself out because I'm still reminded that Jesus right. wept. 
Yes, I am a cry baby, baby, but I don't believe in staying in here. Yeah, I am a cry baby. Right. Like, yeah, I heard you. <laughs> and then if you're black, you're amazing. Keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. yes. Right. And there's no time for bereavement. Thank you for right. confirming right. that. Keep God the glory. Your time and not mean my time. So don't tell someone to get over it. That's me. Right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. All right. We thank you again, Jennifer, for being part of this program. And Kimmy Kim, thank, great interview. Again, thank you. And don't forget, y'all, every Monday we're right here at 10 o'clock, but we start at 7 o'clock with Mr. and Mrs. Devil Slayer out in New York. And then we got, oh, don't forget, tomorrow we got Bible study at 8 o'clock. For those of you that miss church this Sunday, that's right, Pastor V will be here with Bible study at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got more programming for you. Don't forget, we run the Hair Morning Show all during the day. You can catch it at 11 o'clock right after this show with Curry Hines out of Brooklyn. And again, y'all, y'all have a good night. And thank you so much for joining us right here at Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide and Kimmy Kim. You are listening to Jervis Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil X. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide.